good afternoon and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service as we begin the journey of the Lenten season, the journey toward the cross of Christ. It begins in the traditional fashion with ashes that we will receive as a mark of our penance, uh, hearkening back into the Old Testament and the New Testament as well. And uh, in, in penance or in, in sorrow, someone would might rend their clothing and, and place ashes on themselves, a sign of humility <coughs> and a sign of our brokenness before God. Just to hopefully you have a bulletin. Um, I Sorry I overheard you talking about not having your glasses on. I apologize, but we're not using the screen today. We're going old school, so everything is in your, in your bulletin here. Um, there are a couple hymns if you need to mark those ahead of time, but... Uh, you, you'll find them in here. There are in the hymnal, so uh, you'll be able to sing along um, with us. And I'm delighted that uh, Lauren Corder, our office manager, is uh, assisting in worship today. Uh, we're recording this to post it up onto our YouTube channel. We don't have everybody here in our crew, but thank you, Peggy Cook, for uh, recording uh, for us. And we're going to post that. So it will be available at 6 o'clock uh, if you want to see yourself or if you want to let others know that are not able to make it, and it'll be up on our YouTube channel then. So, um, all right, I invite you to rise in body and in spirit and join me in our call to worship. Let us worship God. God sent Christ into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God is our refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. Though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though the, waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, God's love endures forever. Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of tenderness and strengthen us to face our mortality that we may reach with confidence your mercy in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. And the second reading comes from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See. Now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor 
yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. In our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 6. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we pray for a spirit of knowledge, of understanding, that it would come upon us, that we would grow in our faith. Grant that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be holy and acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> In a moment, we'll invite you to come forward to receive the imposition of the ashes. And when we place the ashes on your forehead or on your, your hand, we'll do so with these words, from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Think of all the things that you remember in any of the, the liturgies that you have experienced. Are there words any more sobering than these? From dust you came, to dust you shall return. They come from Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, where God pronounces judgment upon Adam and Eve for their sin. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. When we receive the sign of the ashes upon our foreheads and we hear these words, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return, we relive that judgment which was rendered against all humanity. And we acknowledge our own mortality and that our fate is in God's hand. You might think of Ash Wednesday as the beginning of an annual near-death experience dust you came, to dust you shall return. So we embrace the fast, depriving of ourselves of the things that we rely on so that we would better understand the one who sustains all life, to realize that there is more to life than simply bodily nourishment. We fast in defiance, in fact, to our bodies, our bodies may be destined to die in time, 
but they are designed to live. We breathe without conscious thought, sometimes without any effort, most of the time. Our hearts pump on their own. We cannot stop our brains from processing information even when we sleep or to regulate the functions of the body. Our bodies tell us when they need water, when they need rest, and when they need nourishment. And if we pay attention to our bodies, we follow and we feed and we find rest, relaxation, water. The truth is there are many things that we also consume that fill more than our bellies. We thrive on the affirmation of others. We might seek to gain this through our own achievements or through our piety, as Jesus is describing, making a show for others, or through power and fear, or by cunning and manipulation. We seek comfort in material things, in carnal pleasures, in overconsumption. We covet what others have, and we greedily lust for more. The fact that some go hungry or shelterless in this world is not because there is a shortage of food or roofs, but because some take more than their fair share. This is the cause of supply chain issues, scarcity, and inflation. It's because we consume so much. It stems largely from the pent-up demand that has been upon us these last couple years. People not using you know, used to some of their normal practices of maybe going out to eat or going on vacations, have, have money to spend, and so they buy more and more. And we're all part of it. I know that I'm a part of it. And we feed our lust for power by diminishing the lives of others in the name of superiority or self-preservation or out of our own insecurity. And all of the striving for, for life, what we might think of as life, is actually death by degree. In this way, Lent is not stepping out of reality. The practice of fasting, I think, is acknowledging the reality of God, the reality of our own mortality. From dust we came, to dust we shall return. Well, it was into this reality we see him around us, that Christ willingly came to experience that which we experience ourselves, to live in a world that is dying by greed, to be sinless in a world steeped in greed, and jealousy, and self-preservation, to speak truth in a world whose currency is deceit, cunning, and to die the death that is the fate of every human from Adam and Eve on. How hard and painful it must have been for him to see firsthand what life on earth had become, especially knowing what true life with God is all about. To rely on God to provide for all things, to share what we've been given, not to hoard it, to delight in service, not in subjugating others. And of course, how painful it was for him to unjustly suffer rejection betrayal, crucifixion, and death. What life has become in our world is the death of God. It's darkness. And the end to our human pursuits is not life, but the pursuits we've talked about lead to death, to dust, to emptiness, and despair. And yet, despite all these things, we pursue the life that the world offers before us. So this Lenten season, I invite you to put this life to death by a measure, through your own practice, your own fasting. Fast gluttony by taking less so that others may savor the taste of God's goodness. Fast greed through acts of generosity, giving without any expectation of return. Fast anger by practicing patience, pursuing understanding. 
fast pride through confession and repentance through acts of service. Fast lust by seeking purity of thought and deed through prayer. Fast sloth by being diligent in works of mercy and compassion. And fast envy through acts of praise and thanksgiving for all that God has given to you. And over the course of this Lenten season, may God breathe new life into these dusty souls. Let's pray. O Lord, guide us in these 40 days that we would look around life as we see it and see through some of the practices that that we engage in that lead not to, to life or fulfillment but lead us to death. Help us to put to death these things in us. We would find our true life in you. Amen. Friends in Christ, every year at this time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal Mystery. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance, for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes, this ancient sign speaking to the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marking the penitence of this community. So I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and penitence by prayer and fasting, by works of love, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. Let us bow before God, our Creator and Redeemer, in silent confession. Now we will read responsibly from Psalm 51. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, and your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, my sin is ever before me. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, but take not your Holy Spirit. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. 
I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God. You will not despise us. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We confess to you, O oh God, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. And we confess to you, O oh God, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess yes. to you, O oh God. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess yes. to you, O oh God. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, O God, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, O God. Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering, and for our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, O God, for all false judgments for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, O God, for our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. These ashes are made from Palms of Palm Sunday, the day that we celebrate Jesus and his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So those palms are later dried and burned, that we would mark the beginning of yet another Lenten season. So let us pray for these. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, and a reminder that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Christ our Savior. you came, to dust you shall return. Amen. Those of you who would like to receive the ashes, please come forward.
shall return. And remember that from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Let us pray. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of our Savior. From dust we came, to dust we shall return. May we find comfort in our gracious Lord and Savior, and may God walk with us these 40 days. Go in peace. <laughs>